What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to go through lake trout tubes and tubes are arguably the best lure to catch lake trout, but there's a handful of different things you can do with them to make them do different things. You can rig them differently. And I wanna show you guys kind of how I'm gonna do that. I got a box full of rods here, all rigged up with the different styles of tubes that I fished. And I've also got my tackle bag here to show you guys exactly how I'm rigging them. So if we open up my case here, the first one I'm gonna start with is a cool way to present one and that's vertically, okay? A friend of mine actually showed this to me this year. Now this is just a tube rigged vertically on a one ounce trolling weight. We've got a small short shank, um, number six VMC hybrid treble here at the bottom. And it's a nice vertical presentation. Trout are always used to seeing tubes that are horizontal. This, in this case, it's obviously vertical. It works out really well when those fish are chasing up. They generally like to bite at the bottom of the bait when you're getting them to chase coming up in the water column. So you got that treble hook that's right there. We're gonna drop this thing down. We've actually got a fish. Right now, looking at our Cisco, I've got a Cisco here and a dead stick. You guys can see him right here in the Mega Live right now. And we're gonna drop this tube down, see if we can put some trout in the ice and show you guys some different ways to rig these tubes, be more successful on the water. Here we go, this fish is now coming over to our tube. He sees it, he's coming over from the Cisco. Right here he sees us. He charged it really hard. Here we go, he's coming back. Chasing it down. Ooh, he was right on it again. Right on it, right under the ice. Oh, he just, just spooked. We had him up to 12 feet under the ice. So here's that, where that one ounce kind of comes into play. You can fall really fast. You can get that fish's attention again. Start reeling it up and we got him. Just like that, baby. <laughs> there we go, guys. That's how you can rig a tube vertically. I don't think this one's that big, but you can rig a tube vertically, something different, a presentation these fish don't see. I'm using a short three inch Howie's tube. I'll show you guys the tube in the package and then I'll show you guys how I'm rigging this weight. And I did a little something different to it to see if it would affect the fall um, to try and get a little bit more action out of it. But it's a cool, different way to utilize a tube for lake trout. Just a little baby. Just a little guy. But you guys can see right here, you got that tube perfectly in the corner of the mouth. Those hybrid trebles are just so sticky. You got two shanks right in the corner. I'm gonna have to get pliers to get that thing out. Splitter and pliers will work. Grab all that. Boom, boom. There we go, guys. Just a little guy. This guy's actually gonna come home. He's gonna, he's gonna be dinner tonight. Nice small one, good one to keep. We're gonna let the bigger ones go, but I'd like to take home two little guys like this today. But boom, that took about five minutes and a cool way to rig your tube. Let's, let's kind of go through the the whole setup here. All right, so let's go through exactly how I'm rigging this thing up. You guys can see just a short, short tube. And Howie's is actually a tackle shop kind of around by where I live in Green Bay. And they make really good smallmouth tubes. Um, and being on the Great Lakes, they're a short, kind of a short, fat, goby imitation tube. If I pull one of these out here. Use this uh, bubble gum, the bubble gum color. I believe it's just a three inch tube, but it's actually pretty short and fat. You can see kind of how it has a bigger head, kind of that goby imitation as far as size and profile. Um, but a really nice tube, and especially in the case where we're trying to rig it like we are. I'll get out the uh, lead weight here that I'm using. All right, so basically in this box here, I've got all my tube jig heads and stuff, but what I'm using here is just a straight pencil weight. Kind of you got the two line ties on each end. This one's a three quarter ounce. The one I'm using right now is a one ounce. Um, but basically what I did is I took it and I bent it. Okay, this is a different one that I bent up. You can see the difference here between the two. This one's straight, this one I bent. Now I wanna see if I can get this one to kind of give that tube a falling or fluttering action on the fall. Whereas this one's just gonna be a straight vertical up and down. So that's a little modification I made. I just did it with a vice grips and a hammer and a uh, vice. 
but a little bend to it, something like that. But basically all you gotta do is take this here. Now, I've also got a box here with split rings. Just a small split ring and a little VMC, I forget what size this is. I think it's a number four split ring here. Okay. And we've got our split ring pliers. And like I said, that hook is a uh, VMC hybrid treble which are just incredibly sticky hooks. We've got one right here, short shank, kind of that EWG extra wide gap, really good for getting those hooks into the fish. Then you just gotta take your split ring, put it under your hook, and then attach your hook to your weight. And you can take your tube, then just like anything else, and then you'll slide this over top of your tube. Now the nice part about the Howie's tubes or these shorter tubes being the three inch ones is these lead weights aren't that long. So you still want those hooks to be exposed at the bottom there, okay? You don't want a super long tube because then your tentacles are gonna come way down below your hook. So short tubes, kind of that fat profile helps fit over, over top of the weight. And there you've got a super cool rigged up vertical tube. All right guys, the next rod we're gonna break out is a little bit different tube. This is a big, long, more, I think this is a five inch glow tube. And now you'll see this one, I do have rigged vertically. Uh, I got a trailer hook here in the back. Again, that's a, that's a hybrid treble on the back. I think that one's actually number four, a little bit bigger, just due to the bigger size of the tube. And the cool thing with tubes is you can adjust the weight as far as your jig head to determine how fast you want your fall. Some days these fish want to really fall fast, or fast fall, I should say, and some days they want a slower fall. And you can change that with the weight of your jig heads. I've got jig heads in my box that are half ounce all the way up to two ounce. Um, this one here is an ounce and a half, which is going to match this bigger tube and they're really nicely. Um, and like I say, I upgrade that back hook a little bit larger. But you want to get them rigged so that your hook is right at the bottom of those tentacles or just below them because you don't want them to get caught up in there because you want those tentacles to be able to move and shake and do their thing down there to, to get those fish fired up. But glow is a super effective color. Anything bright, like on that other side of the spectrum, like the pinks or truce, stuff like that, even orange. And then on the other side, you've got glow, which is super good. And then a lot of your whites are natural colors as well. And you can even get into like some shad colors um, or, you know, some, I like some greens that kind of imitate the back of a bait fish and then with a white belly. We're gonna get this one down there, set our drag, and see if we can get one on the big glow tube. There you go guys, we got another one on the another one on the dead bait and here he's coming over to the tube right now. Ooh, so close. Now here's where that heavy jig head, he's chasing it down right now, you can see him chasing it down. Here's where that heavy jig head comes into play, that fast fall. See if you can get him fired up, here he comes back. Look at him, he's flying up to eat this thing, come on. Oh. He's right under the ice. Had him up to 12, 15, 12, 15 feet right there again. Here's that fast fall, you can see he likes it. Oh, he almost ate it right there. He's gonna come chasing up, right on it. Oh, he's all over this thing. Oh no, hold on. Oh, I might've just screwed it up right there, my line. Got twisted around my tip. He likes the fall, that's for sure. Right on it. Oh my gosh. He won't come higher than 15 feet. That's like his ceiling. Come on. He doesn't know what he wants. Here he comes again. Come on. Oh, he's right on it. He cannot resist that fall. Every time it falls, he gets super hot on it. right under it. Come on. 
Maybe it's a little big of a profile for him, but he definitely likes the fall. Every time it falls, he gets right on that thing. They'll hit it on the fall too. It's, it's hard to tell when they do, but they will hit it on the fall. He's trying to figure out what he wants. I don't know if he knows what he wants. There he is on the side. He's coming over to it. Maybe. Oh no. I think I just missed him. Man, that was so cool. He was up and down, back and forth, all over that thing. Like I say, the mark didn't look super big, so maybe it was a small one again, and it might be a little bit big of a profile for him, but he definitely liked the fall, and that's where you can change, like I say, that weighting in your jig head. This one's an ounce and a half, so it's falling pretty quick, but it's also on a five inch tube. So if you wanna make that fall rate even faster, yet you downsize your tube, so you could go with like a three and a half inch tube. There's less surface area, so that the bait will actually fall faster, and maybe that is what that fish would have wanted. The profile might have been big, but he definitely liked the fall. Every time we let that thing free fall, he was on it going down. So he liked how fast it was falling, but maybe the profile was just a little bit big for him. So that's another modification you can make is the size of your tube compared to the size of your jig head. Um, can, can definitely kind of find that sweet spot of what they want for that particular day. Here we go, guys, here's one looking at the Cisco. Just throw to the tube right now, and now he sees us. He's chasing. He's not super aggressive. Let's see if we can get him going here in the fall. Oh, here he comes back. He didn't exactly love it. The problem is, is you need these baits to go on a free fall. They don't like them when they get caught up a little bit of ice in your guides. They want them to fall free. You can see I'm kind of snapping my tip to get the line to come out. They like it when it falls nice like that, but if you get any kind of ice in there, they don't like that. And what's happening is on that free fall, this bait's just doing these big circles. It looks like that wounded bait fish kind of going down. And then if you're getting ice in there and you're kind of twitching it, it kind of makes that bait twitch and do weird stuff as it's falling and they do not like that it's important to keep your your eyelets clean as possible keep your rollers clean on your reel that's why these recoil guides are nice i got my bait falling i'm just flicking my guides here real quick as that bait's falling he's chasing it down take it away from him just he's not liking it this is the second fish i've kind of had this neutral negative reaction from and i don't know if it's the size of the tube they all like it on the fall which is that heavier weight might have to make the adjustment in the size of the tube but i just wanted to show you guys like the bigger tubes it, it depends on the day sometimes they really like them um, and then some days you know like this i don't think they're they're digging the bigger profile First fish we marked this morning with that smaller tube just absolutely came in and smacked it. He's liking more of the jigging stroke almost. Not having it. So let's change our tube and the size of our jig head and see if that helps us get a bite. As long as that fish is still in the area, he's right there. We can still see him on the screen. It's great. Grab my other rod. I've got it rigged up. Now this is a three and three quarter ounce jig with a half ounce head. So it's probably it's about 30% smaller and it's a third of the weight. We'll drop this thing down quick. See if we can get his attention. Now, this is a tube that people, here we go, he's right, he's back, here he is. This is probably that same fish. Okay, now that, that's the best reaction I've got out of him outside of that initial first time he chased it. Now, he's not loving the fall of this one so much. See how he's staying off the side? Oh, now he's coming after it. Oh, 
he was right on it. He chased it all the way up. He was right on it the whole way. So when you let these tubes fall like this, you, they'll sometimes get out of your cone angle, so it's hard to see them, but as you're just straight reeling it, it comes into back into your cone angle. This one's just not happy. So this tube that I just put on is one that I get questions on a lot, and this is probably, oh, I know it's by far the most common one that I use. And that's this white and chartreuse tube, and everybody asks me where I get this thing. And honestly, it's a white tube, and I shouldn't share this, but I'm going to for you guys. This is kind of my little secret. But how I get that tube to be chartreuse is actually with a paint. Okay, this is a company called Spike It. Okay, and this is just a small little, almost like nail polish, um, but it's actually paint just for plastics. Now, ahead of time, I'll lay my tubes out. They're just standard white tubes, and I'll take some of this, and I'll just paint the head, and then I paint the tentacles in the back as well, and then you get that really nice white and chartreuse contrast, just like that. Okay, now that is... A little something, it comes in a bunch of different colors. Um, I think I got a orange one in here as well. Here's an orange, nice bright orange. Uh, they got a bunch of different colors. It's basically for, it's a bass company, I guess, primarily, um, for tipping worms or trailers or whatever, but spike it. That stuff is amazing. Little secret out for you guys. But that's how I kind of dress up my tubes, make them look pretty. And you guys, if you watch any of the other lake trout videos, have seen me catch so many fish on this exact tube. But then dry berries right there, if you could get a plate, here's one. Yeah, right under the ice. <laughs> he ate it like five feet under the ice. Just a little guy. Wow, what a dead streak. Well, he's spitting up a bunch of bones and guts. So he's eating something just a little shafter. Just a baby. Well, so guys, we uh, end up coming back to the first place I caught him, and I went back to the first bait I caught him on this morning. Since Chris got here, we haven't really done much at all. Just a little baby. That's the second one I wanted to take home today. That's a good eater. Yeah. Whoa, look at this one. Dude, this trout was like, that trout was six inches under the ice. That was freaking awesome. What the hell was that? Dude, that, you just came swimming through like less than five feet under the ice. I reeled up and freaking whacked it. Is that a one or? I think it's at least a better one. So you see where this stuff is right now? Yeah. That's where I saw him. He was up higher than he was like right under the zero. <laughs> he was way up there. I reeled up to him. He was right there when I saw him. Probably don't mess around either, eh? He probably just No, he smacked it. it right away. That was crazy. Yeah, guys, I think they like the uh, the tube rigged vertically, if you can see that. Right here, that same one we fished with this morning. They're not digging the horizontal stuff. Chris is fishing the horizontal tube. But this is the one they're loving. That was crazy cool. That fish was right under the ice. Yes. You stay another week, and then before you know it, it's like the middle of November, end of November. Yeah. I was like, well, maybe I should just start baiting gear back here. Now. Oh, God. That was out of nowhere. <laughs> Almost got the rod. Oh, I just lost them. Oh, I lost them. Wow. That was wild. Out of nowhere, just yeah. <laughs> Missed that one again. Yeah. On the freaking pink vertical tube, baby. All right, guys, that is going to be a wrap for today's video. We got a little bit off task, but. I blame that on our company, but anyways, the tube, this was the deal today, the vertical tube. 
short three inch Howie's tube, one ounce weight, a little bit of bend in it, and then that small VMC hybrid treble on the bottom. But it worked really well. I mean, Chris was fishing a tube basically half the day, of a horizontal tube, and uh, he had one bite that he missed, and other than that, he didn't really have much action. So this was definitely the one they preferred today. Just a little bit different way to rig it. And uh, yeah, we'll give that one a go on another day, but for right now, I'm gonna pack her up, head home, and we'll see you guys on the next one.